The story I bring you today has been clinically documented as the most severe case of childhood schizophrenia, and it's been 20 years since then. It all began on August 8, 2002, when Janie Rezai Phil, the firstborn of Susan and Michael Sophia, was born. As new parents, they looked forward to enjoying and starting a new life with their newborn. But within days, that hope turned into a nightmare. Within a few hours of Janie's birth, her mother noticed the baby staring fixedly at something. She consulted a nurse who said that babies usually don't do that at such a young age, but nothing more was made of it. And her eyesight looks pretty good. She's yeah. focused. Is that normal? They usually don't focus when oh, they're okay. this Back at home, nothing strange or alarming happened during the first week. However, on the seventh day, Janie began to sleep for only 20 minutes at a time. She would remain wide awake the rest of the time, sleeping only about three hours a day, while a newborn typically sleeps between 14 and 16 hours. They also noticed that she stared at the wall or followed something with her eyes as if tracking an invisible object. We have a video showing Janie looking at something moving across the ceiling and following it with her eyes all the time. Often, she would look at things that weren't there. By the time she was five months old, Janie's parents began to think her behavior was due to being exceptionally gifted because she could already point to her own nose, eyes, and mouth at that age. When she was born, she seemed to know things she shouldn't have known. At five months, she pointed to her nose, eyes, and mouth. She knew all that and did things babies don't usually do, so we always thought she was gifted. We never considered any other possibility. At three years old, she started talking about imaginary friends and playing with them. Her parents thought nothing of it, attributing it to her vivid imagination. Everything seemed normal until she started mentioning 400, a bad cat that tormented her. 400 the cat, the day our lives changed. I remember at her third birthday party, she asked 400 the cat to throw juice at the twins. Thinking she was talking about an imaginary friend, I said it was okay and didn't give it more thought. Her parents noticed that Janie spent a lot of time playing with her imaginary friends, isolating herself from the real world. From this point on, her behavior became unacceptable. By the time she was four, Janie was completely isolated from her surroundings, didn't play with other children, and became violent towards everyone, including herself. Her parents tried to educate and control her using conventional strategies, rules, timeouts, rewards, punishments, but nothing seemed to change her behavior. That year, her mother gave birth to another baby. By then, Janie was five years old, and this event worsened her behavior, making her more violent until one day she broke down completely. Out of concern, her parents decided to take her to Dr. Linda Wood, a specialist in child and adolescent psychiatry. Initially, she suspected behavioral problems, but the diagnosis progressed from ADHD to bipolar disorder. Now, what really scared us was when Dr. Wood said she had never seen such a severe case. It terrified me. I couldn't understand how something like this had never been seen before. During this time, Janie's parents learned to live with her problem as no one else helped them beyond private consultations until one day another turn of events occurred. That morning, Janie went to school looking fine and happy. Two hours later, I got a call saying she had run out of her classroom and was throwing herself against the doors and windows without trying to open them. They were so scared for her safety that they had locked her in an office. The psychologist told us that if we didn't arrive within half an hour, she would call the police, and I said that was fine. No one was helping us. We had no answers, so I reached the point where I was willing to let the state take over Janie's care to get her the help she needed. We allowed the police to intervene because it was the only way to get her admitted to the psychiatric unit at the University of California, where the experts were. Janie was admitted by law for a mandatory three-day stay. We didn't know if she had Asperger's or another type of autism. Usually, children stay in psychiatric care for three or four days. Here, specialists ruled out possible disorders except one, childhood schizophrenia. Dr. Mark D'Antonio, the director of the Child and Adolescent Neuropsychiatry Hospital in California, finally diagnosed Janie with childhood schizophrenia, which is very rare in children since schizophrenia typically appears in early adulthood, but it is not impossible. She has childhood schizophrenia, and it's a very clear case. It's highly unusual for a six-year-old to be so intelligent and participative, and at the same time seem so confused and delusional. Janie's parents finally felt relieved, although the diagnosis wasn't good, at least they knew what they were facing. Janie was diagnosed with schizophrenia at six years old. Doctors believe she experiences hallucinations most of the time. When we talk to children with imaginary friends, they know they're imaginary, but wish they were real. 
In children with schizophrenia aged 6, 7, or 8, medication often doesn't work well, which is why Dr. D'Antonio decided to prescribe clozapine, the most potent antipsychotic available for treating schizophrenia. Although Janie's behavior improved significantly with the medication, she continued to have psychotic symptoms, which was dangerous for her brother. Therefore, her parents decided to sell their house and buy two one-bedroom apartments in the same building. One parent would live with the boy and the other with Janie, maintaining a family environment during the day. However, the years of negative experiences broke the marriage, and Susan and Michael eventually divorced. This led to a media battle when Michael appeared on the famous Dr. Phil show. He accused his ex-wife of exposing their daughter's illness on a YouTube channel and of making their second child sick with excessive medication. Their son, Bodhi, also developed health issues similar to his sister's, but with severe behaviors that suggested an autistic spectrum disorder. The children's father accused their mother of giving Bodhi clozapine, thinking he also had schizophrenia. Susan posted videos on YouTube asking Bodhi if he needed the medication, almost forcing him to speak, which led to heavy criticism. That episode of Dr. Phil turned into a real show, with Susan convinced that her son also had schizophrenia. Bodhi was never diagnosed with anything, but he was admitted to the same psychiatric center where his sister had been. If you dig a little, you'll find that Dr. D'Antonio also handled Bodhi's case and spoke about it at the time. A few days after the Dr. Phil show, government authorities intervened, removing custody of the children from their parents. Both Janie and her brother were placed in a specialized center for several years until Janie turned 18. The young woman then requested to return to her mother, and social services approved it, as investigations found no evidence to support the accusations against Susan. When Susan lost custody, she was forced to shut down her YouTube channel due to all the accusations. One of the most notable accusations was that she suffered from Munchausen syndrome by proxy, where a caregiver fabricates or induces illness in a child to gain attention. Today, at 20 years old, Janie has learned to live with her schizophrenia and medication has helped control her symptoms. She is in high school and is currently very involved in charitable and social causes in California. She is also working with her stepfather on legal matters to get her brother Bodhi released from the center where he is still interned. Janie always says that she lives on the planet Kalalini, which lies between the border of this world and hers, and with this, she implies that everything she experiences and feels there is as real as it is here. A couple of years ago, a band composed a song about Janie's case telling her story. If you want to listen to it, I'll leave the link below. So what do you think of this case? Did you know about it? If not, did you know there are other cases that also challenge our understanding of the brain? Don't miss our previous video, where we explore another extraordinary case, Can We Live Without a Brain? The Case of Noah Wall. Join us as we delve into the captivating journey of Noah, a boy whose very existence challenges our understanding of the brain's capabilities. Get ready to be amazed by the miracles of biology and the profound lessons this case holds for all of us. Until next time.